Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Great, thank you.
Good morning. Welcome to Nativity of Our Lord. Our gathering song is number 127, Beyond the Days. Please rise. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, <clears throat> we see a light of faith renewed, and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day. Fourteen days and nights you guide the steps of our journey. May your presence be felt in the whisper of your Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in our longing we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day. Not bread alone are we to walk on this journey. Speak the words that you like to the yearnings of our hearts. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed. And in our longing, we thirst for guidance to walk with you day by day. To walk with you day by In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with you. your spirit. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody this Sunday, the second Sunday of Lent. Had a great vacation, in case people were wondering. I went down to Florida. I flew down there, and I did uh, several different things. I went to Kennedy Space Center and visited a couple of the national uh, parks and went out fishing. I ended up catching about a six-foot bull shark. It was interesting catching it because we were fishing for uh, tarpon. And the water was only about four or five feet deep all, all along through that southern end of the, of the uh, Everglades. But he, we could see a tarpon, or he, the guy that I was with could see a tarpon coming in. And then all of a sudden it took off. And he goes, oh no, a shark. And he grabbed the pole and he started to reeling. He says, ah, it's useless anyways. And sure enough, the shark bit it. And so then he says, here, you might as well fight this for a, whole, for a little while, for as long as it'll last. He says, you'll never get it in. And so I sat there and kept reeling it in and stuff, and we had to follow the, make up some of the line, and, and uh, we finally got it up to the side of the boat. And he says, finally, I get my hook back. I can get my hook back from, uh, uh, from a bull shark. But he says, I'm not getting my hand that close to that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But it was interesting. I ended up catching a grouper about this big too, uh, King Grouper. But so there was a lot of different things that were down there, even with the national parks and many other things that were there. One of the other things that I had done, and I knew before I was going down there, I went to a, a, a specific church. It was a Sacred Heart Church in uh, Florida City. And on Sunday evenings, they have a mass that's set in Creole. I thought, huh. I've never really listened to Creole spoken. I wonder what a mass is going to be like. And so I went there. I went, it was at 7 o'clock in the evening, so I was there about 10, 15 minutes early. And, and I was the only white person that was in there. <laughs> People dress really well for mass. It's a poor area. 
But at eight, 7 o'clock came along, and I thought, oh, what's going on? I wonder when the Mass is going to stop. And I went, oh, yeah, it's in Creole. It's going to be in Creole time. <laughs> and so it started about quarter after 7. And then, of course, the man, Mass continued on. There were many other things that went along with it. But they did it in their own time, in their own pace. It took over an hour and a half for Mass just a normal Sunday Mass. But to see the way in which they were, they sang along and the way in which they participated in it. I couldn't understand much of the words. I could understand there was a French bass creole. But to see the beauty of the Mass and to see the different ways in which people celebrated, one of the things that they do there as they come into to, to the church, they don't genuflect. They walk into the pew and they stand there and they bow their heads right before the Lord, and they face towards the Lord, and they pray, sometimes five, ten minutes. And then they raise up, sign themselves, and they sit down. Part of their custom. But God does continue to show us many different ways in which his love wishes to come into our lives. So as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call <clears throat> sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. And let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from the land of your kinsfolk and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. Let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. 
of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you. Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elisha. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, last evening I couldn't help but notice, and even this, and this morning also, I couldn't help but notice how beautiful that psalm is. And to see, the, I wish I would have did a little bit more of a study on it because it is such a beautiful psalm. I think it's one of David's psalms. But there's much beauty even in and all through of life, isn't there? To see what God has given us. But that's part of the Lenten season is to see what is it in us that's not allowing that beauty of, of God's light to shine out for us, isn't it? So how is everybody, everybody's Lenten journey going? Okay, we're about 11 days into it. Of course, there's much more that we're called to expand upon, to grow in that richness and that love of what God has for us and what he is trying to unveil for us. I couldn't help but think about that even with our, with our readings for today because we're on that journey that goes through life, not only a Latin journey, but it's a life journey. Abraham in our first, or Abram, I should say, from our first reading in Exodus, was called by God. I wonder what it was like for Abram to develop that relationship with God. The first one to have developed this relationship that we know of, that spoke about it. What was it that inspired Abram to follow God in that journey? This was over in Iraq, along the Euphrates rivers, about 10 miles off of the river. And it was more towards the southern part of Iraq. And God would ask him to go on a journey, first off to visit his relatives up north or along the Euphrates river. But then it would be a longer journey that would go all the way along what we call the Fertile Crescent, up where now Israel is, over into Egypt and bend them back again. It wasn't a small journey that Abram was on. I mean, I quickly measured it out on the, on the map from uh, the biblical map. It was roughly 1,600 miles. I thought about that this morning. I thought, how far is it from here to, to another place in our nation to compare with it? It's 1,700 miles down to Miami. Just a physical journey, that's a long way to travel in a person's life. God continually pointed out new things to Abram as he was walking along. Eventually his name would be changed also, wouldn't it? From a father to a father of many. But it wasn't just a physical journey, it was a spiritual journey that Abraham was also on. To think about all those different encounters that Abram or Abraham had with God. Sacrifice your son. <laughs> your only son. We use his name every time in the liturgy, don't we? When we use the first Eucharistic prayer. Where we have that sacrifice, because that's primarily what we enter into when we enter into the liturgy, isn't it? The culmination of the liturgy is a sacrifice. Listen to the Eucharistic prayers, all the words of the different Eucharistic prayers. It's an offering up to God the Father of the Son, the climax 
of the Mass, the climax of the liturgy. It's not receiving Jesus. It's that offering of Jesus in the liturgy. And as we offer him, along with everything that we do throughout our lives, throughout the week, then we are able to receive our Lord and allow him to transform us, just like he transformed Abraham with all the encounters of his life and what he went through. And so it goes with the other readings, doesn't it? We have this readings about the transfiguration where Jesus leads his apostles, his three apostles, up on a mountain. If you go up on Mount Tabor, you can look all around. It sits by itself. There's plains all around it, all by itself. As you can walk from one side to the other. You can see whoever is coming and whoever is going all across those plains. You can think about all the different ways in which God had led his people through those plains, the battles that took place, the many other things that took place as you're standing up on Mount Tabor. Jesus leaves these three apostles up there and he's transfigured before them. His face shows, glows white his body, a prefigurement of, of the uh, resurrection of what he is going to go through. He's seen there talking with Elijah and Moses, the law and the prophets. Of course, these two prophets are there. Jesus is standing there conversing with them, saying, hey, I am the prophet. Much more, God revealed these things to these prophets, but I am that word that has come into the world. What about that law that is given? I've not come to abolish a law. I've come to fulfill that law. That law that God had given to Moses. Those precepts of the law that Jesus expanded upon with the Beatitudes in the way in which he lived out his life and brought his grace to so many people. No wonder why Peter said, Lord, it is good that we are here. Lord, it is good that we are here. Oh Lord, it is good that we are here. Shall we make three tents? One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, he says. He doesn't want to leave where they're at. This is a great spot, isn't it? A cloud comes over him, a bright cloud. And from that cloud says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. And then they are led down from that mountain. We hear in the different gospel accounts of what takes place after Jesus comes down from that mountain. The way, reason why the church has a transfiguration, tradition has it, is that it took place 40 days before the crucifixion of Christ, before Good Friday. We have it every year on this Sunday, that transfiguration of the Lord so that we can sit there and look at the way in which Christ is asking us to see those words working in our lives. What are, those pro what are we listening to from those prophets of old? What is the church saying to us today? Enriching our hearts and our minds to love that God has for us. Because we're all on a journey, aren't we? To see the way in which God changes our lives. Because Peter, James, and John didn't say it, stay the same. Neither did Abraham, did he? Abraham had to follow out in faith, not knowing where he was going, not knowing what God was going to ask of him next. That father in faith, whose name is continually used for over 4,000 years. Can you imagine that? I will make your name great. Your name will become a blessing. 
God makes our name a blessing also, doesn't he? As we follow him. We allow his grace to work in our lives. What about Peter? He surely, heck, wasn't ready to be a leader, was he? But God will ask him to be a leader, especially of that early church, especially after the resurrection. How is it that God asks each and every one of us to be a leader in some ways, as long as we follow him? What is it he's asking us to do? To lead others to. What about James? Well, James would offer up his life, literally, becoming the first martyr of the church. And here we are in the Lenten season. What is it that we are offering up of our lives for Christ, for the sake of Christ? Are we doing it for our own selves? Are we doing it for the sake of others? So others can grow and be enriched from those seeds of life that God has planted within us, like he has with those martyrs of our faith. What about John, that beloved disciple who rested at the breast of Christ at the Last Supper? who continually pondered all those mysteries, those greatness of who Christ is, and those things that he built, uh, bestowed upon him, and the way in which he was able to convey it out to other people through his Gospels. So it is that God asks us to do, isn't it? To give witness to who Christ is and the life that he has for us. We had some of that witnessing just over on uh, Fat Tuesday right before the Lenten season began, people gave testimony to their faith in a way in which God would enriched and blessed them. So it is for each and every one of us to recognize the way in which Christ wishes to work in our lives. Because he wants to say, this is a good place for us to be, to recognize the graces and the blessings that flow out to us because ultimately he's going to the cross to die for us to save us from our own ways and for us to recognize the ways in which he wishes to work in and through our lives. To crucify those ways of ours to the cross and allow his graces to continually flow out to, from us. God says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Walk in his ways. Because we're all on a journey of life. Not only through this Lenten season, but onto a promised land. A land that will be transformed, transfigured, way beyond what we can comprehend. Because that was what, what the apostles also were going through on that Mount of Transfiguration, wasn't it? It was an altered state of consciousness that the apostles were entering into. They were gaining wisdom and knowledge of a life that is way beyond them. They didn't understand it then, but it would be expounded more as they lived out their lives. So it is with us each and every time we enter into the liturgy. God asks us, how are we being transformed? Are we being transfigured to his life and his love?
And let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and understanding that God desires our good, we come to him with our prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father and all who lead the church, may they continue to grow in the knowledge of how God guides them in shepherding their flocks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For judges and others in positions of authority, may the Holy Spirit grant them wisdom in balancing mercy with justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel disconnected from the Lord or from the church, may we find ways to see that God's love may uplift them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing to enter the church this Easter, may God and the prayers of this community strengthen them on their journey. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in our armed forces, our veterans, police, fire, and first responders, and all caregivers, give them courage, hope, and strength in their daily challenges. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For addicts and substance abusers, for recovery counselors and doctors who help them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mike and Elsa Burke, who we remember at this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in praying the vocations prayer. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And one more prayer. I received a uh, notice yesterday, or a phone call yesterday, from uh, Bill Hall. Kay has passed away, uh, so they're asking for prayer. Uh, of course, that was quite sudden. So we'll continue to keep the whole family in prayer at their loss.
and of course with all those that have gone before us, including the funeral that we had yesterday for Floyd uh, Brenham and for all of them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring our needs before you, knowing that you care for us with the love of a father. We ask that you hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of offering, number 131, Save Your People, 131. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy the God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the in the first Eucharistic prayer this morning. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble <coughs> prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, given you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen.
And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Yeah. 
Our communion hymn, number 601, Christ Be Our Light, 601. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be a light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be a light. Shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church. Gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shed until all are fed. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today.
Please remain seated for the prayer after communion. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I'd like to invite Eric Pierce up. He uh, has a few words to say for us uh, about some coming events. Hi, I'm Eric Parrish, and I'm an 8th grade student at Nativity of Our Lord School. I would like to invite you all to Nativity's 39th Gala. The Gala will be held on Saturday, April 1st at Cabaret Cove. This year's Gala will include a buffet dinner with chicken cordon bleu, prime rib, along with all the other fixings. There will also be games and raffles. We will hold our online auction again this year. Tickets to attend the gala and for the $1,000 cash raffle are for sale at the script table or in both the parish and school offices. Please join us for our school's largest fundraiser. Thank you. And thank you, Eric. It's always neat to see the different things that go on with the gala, and even to see the different ways in which it's changing, isn't it? Now there's a QR code, code one of those little boxes that you can look at, and it'll bring you right to the, the, uh, to the auction that is taking place, and the many things on there. They'll continue to add more and more things to that auction. Uh, the sac Secular Franciscans will be holding a come and see session uh, today at 2 p.m. For all those who are interested in finding out more about the order, uh, they will be meeting in the gathering area. A reminder that the Stations of the Cross will be taking place Friday at 3 p.m. and also at 6 p.m. The Case for Jesus, a video series from Forum, will continue this Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. They will also be meeting in the gathering space. I think there was about 30 people last, year, last Sunday here for it, so that's really good seeing the different things for it. They have a lot of really good stuff on form now, and it keeps growing. Uh, please re visit the religious gift table in the back of the church. Precedes are for the faith formation program. Tickets are also on sale at the script table. Script is also available uh, in the back of the church. Uh, the tickets for uh, Awaken are there with the internationally renowned speaker of Paul Kim. Uh, they're $20 a piece, and that will take place here at Nativity on March 26th. Parish tickets are also available in the office. Uh, all are invited also to the fam Nativity Family Skating Session at the Ice Arena on Sunday, March 12th. That's next Sunday from 1045 to 1215 p.m. There's no cost for this uh, event. And with a name like James Patrick Powers, People have been wondering sometimes about the uh, St. Patrick's Day landing on Friday. There is a dis dispensation that is being given for meat on that day so we can have corned beef and cabbage, cabbage uh, or any of the other things. And with that, I think that's it. Please rise and bow your heads for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn, number 208. God, we praise you. 208. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you, sovereign Lord. 
Mighty King, whom angels worship, the good by your church adored. All creation shows your glory, heaven and earth draw near your throne. Singing holy, 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 Lord of hosts and God alone. True apostles, faithful prophets, saints who set the world ablaze. Martyrs once unknown, unheeded, join one growing song of praise. While your church on earth confesses one majestic trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God our hope eternally. Ha, ha, ha.